Hey everyone, how's it going? As we know, back in the spring of this year, Planet Zoo obtained a pack that took this community by surprise, the Wetlands Animal Pack. Following that DLC in this past summer, we got the most recent pack to date, the 10th pack and yet again another pack that surprised this community, the Conservation Pack. It's safe to say that this has been a year of Frontier trying new things and setting up a better future for their games, including Planet Zoo, so in this video, as the title suggests, we're going to be doing some more DLC speculation. My last speculation video was all the way back in March of this year, and it turned out to be kind of a hit. Some of my predictions ended up being true, and now that we've seen how the year has progressed, I think we have a better idea of where the game is going and can form some new ideas. And now is a good time to do it as the 11th pack should be coming out in just the next few weeks. Uh, and so what is this 11th pack? Or better yet, what is the future of both animal and scenery packs? Well, I think it's pretty obvious based on what we've gotten this year so far. I feel like the Wetlands Animal Pack was a kickoff or a trend of environmental themed animal packs from this point on, and even the conservation pack just feels like evidence for Frontier wanting to do more miscellaneous themed scenery packs from this point on. Time will tell, but at least for now we can go ahead and start forming some new ideas and looking at some potential new DLCs. So now let's finally get into it by taking a look at some new animal pack ideas, kicking it off with deserts. So how is this going to work? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but basically you have two main groups here, animals and alternative animals. The eight animals up above are of course the eight main animals that I think would be in this pack, and that's based on a number of different factors, such as what I think Frontier would do, what's popular in the community, and my own personal preferences. And then you have the eight animals that are down below, which are, surprise surprise, the alternative animals. Again, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just to be clear, the eight animals down below aren't like an exact alternative set to the eight up above. It's more like a selection of alternative animals in which you can just take one and swap it out with another animal from up above. I mean, it's pretty basic and you can interpret it however you want, but my way will become clear as we go through the video. We're going to start off with what is quite possibly the single most iconic desert animal of our time, the dromedary camel. I feel pretty confident in saying that this one would be a must for a pack like this, but you know what, even if this pack was to never happen, I still bet we'd get it at some point. Who knows, maybe even as the free anniversary animal this year. That's just a guess, but uh, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. After that we have the Arabian Sandcat. I personally feel like if the game is going to get any more felines, they need to start shooting for more smaller, more elusive, lesser known cats like the Arabian Sandcat, uh, which is why I needed to include them on this list, because I think it's the ideal uh, target for cats now from this point on. Up next we have the Hamadreus Baboon. This is a big one, I know a lot of people really want this one in the game right now. Um, and the truth is, the Hamadreus Baboon isn't really a true desert animal. I mean, they're right on the verge of it. They live in more sub-desert regions, but I honestly think that the want outweighs the true facts here, and I just had to include them because I know they are such a big one that people want right now. So yeah, I had to include the Hamadreus Baboon. After that we have the Addix, what is quite possibly one of the single most beautiful looking ungulates I've ever seen. To me the Addix would be a perfect option for a list like this. They actually kind of feel like something Frontier would do, especially having seen how many ungulates they've picked this year. I would love to have Addix in the game and so I just, I, I wanted to mention them. Then we're on to our exhibit animal for the pack, we have the Egyptian tortoise. In my personal opinion, I think the game, uh, when it comes to its exhibit animals, are missing tortoises and more turtles more than anything right now. So something like a desert tortoise or just any, any sort of desert tortoise like the Egyptian tortoise would be a great choice in my opinion. I think it'd make an actual like desirable pick for this pack in terms of the exhibit animals, but that's just my own opinion. Next, we are moving on to the deserts of North America with the Greater Roadrunner, what is quite possibly one of the most iconic desert animals of North America. I would love to see Greater Roadrunners. I could totally picture them in this pack. Uh, I mean, yes, they can fly, but they spend most of their time on the ground, so I think they'd work. I honestly think they would work with the game's mechanics and they'd make such an awesome cash grab for this pack. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to mention them on the list. Second to last, we have the Collared Bakari, uh, something that is surprisingly not a pig, as I've learned recently. I actually thought they were pigs, turns out they're kind of their own thing, but they are still related to swines in some way. Uh, but I will say that the game does need more swine, or at least more swine-like animals, so the Collared Bakari I think would be a perfect choice for this pack. Uh, and I know, you know, it might not be super exciting to some, but uh, you gotta keep in mind that Frontier is gonna look for cheaper options like this, so I feel like the Collared Bakari was a perfect choice for this pack. 
And lastly, we move all the way over to the Australian Outback with the Parenti. Again, like the Collared Vicari, not a super exciting animal, and I know some people might not find it that inter interesting as it's really just a big lizard, and it's not like we don't already have monitors in the game, but I wanted to mention it because I think the Parenti would be an awesome choice, and again, it feels like something Frontier would pick uh, to kind of fill in the gaps uh, without doing anything super expensive, you know? It's just a cool big lizard, actually the third biggest in the world. And that is it for the eight main animals up above. Let's go ahead and move down now to the alternative animals. Continuing with the Australian Outback, we have the Greater Bilby, what is in my opinion one of my personal favorite underrated marsupials. I love the Greater Bilby, uh, such a cool creature and an, and, a, and an icon for the Outback in my opinion. The truth is they're down here in the alternatives and not the Parenti because as cool as they are, they're not very well known. They're very elusive, uh, again not well known, and would be kind of difficult to do, especially if they wanted to make the, or continue with the marsupial birthing animation. So the truth is, as much as I'd want them, they're more of a stretch, which is why they're just in the alternatives, but I still needed to mention them. And one last desert animal from Australia, we have the Thorny Devil. Just, you know, another exhibit alternative. I love these guys. Such a beautiful, cool looking lizard. I just, I really wanted to mention them. Then we're going back over to the deserts of North America with the coyote. Not an animal that is exclusively found in deserts, but still heavily found in them. Uh, I think the coyote would be, you know, a good canine alternative. I don't actually think we'd ever get them. I think it's just more of a want for some people, but you know, if they were to ever uh, be included in the game, it'd be a great choice for any North American zoos. So I just wanted to mention them, you know, if they're looking for more canines, coyotes could be a potential option. Then after that, we have what is definitely uh, a, an alternative for the Greater Roadrunner. We have the Burrowing Owl. You know, I think these guys would be awesome, just like the Roadrunner. Not, you know, not a bird that flies that often, but really just spends most of its time on the ground. Uh, plus, we have burrows in the game, and I could totally see them using, using the burrows, of course. Uh, I think they'd be awesome. I'd love to see Burrowing Owls. I mean, how cool to be to have a terrestrial owl in the game. I think that'd be awesome. So I had to mention the Burrowing Owl. Then we're on to the bobcat, just like the coyote, not an animal that's exclusive to deserts, but still heavily found in them, uh, and potentially one good alternative to the Arabian sandcat, so I just wanted to include them on the list. And then lastly for North America, we have the desert bighorn sheep, a subspecies of the bighorn sheep. Uh, again, if they're looking for more ungulates and more cheaper choices, I think the desert bighorn sheep would be a perfect pick. I mean, I'd love to have them in the game. It's just another, you know, ungulate at the end of the day, but I would still uh, enjoy it in my games personally. Going back to the deserts of Africa, finish it off, we have the brown hyena. Uh, super cool animal. To me, they just instantly remind me of Frontier wanting to surprise us. Like, I could totally see them just throwing in brown hyenas to totally throw us off. Uh, and you know what? That'd be totally fine because I'd welcome them with open arms. It's always great to get more underrated, not very well-known animals like a brown hyena. They're also just a beautiful creature, so I really wanted to mention them on the list. And lastly, as one more exhibit alternative, we have the pancake tortoise, which would be, you know, a good alternative to the Egyptian tortoise. Uh, I just, I love them. I think they're kind of funny how, as the name suggests, they are very flat. And again, this would be a good desert tortoise alternative to the Egyptian tortoise. I just think that's what we need in this pack is a desert tortoise. So either Egyptian or pancake, I'm fine with either, but I wanted to mention both. And there you have it, that is my take on the Desert Animal Pack. I actually think a pack like this has a very good chance of being the 11th pack, but that's just my own opinion. Let me know what you guys think of this one and what animals you would choose, but now let's go ahead and move on to the next Animal Pack. This next DLC I originally thought was going to be the first pack of this year, but instead we got the Wetlands Animal Pack. Of course, I'm talking about a Rainforest Animal Pack. A pack like this I think would be awesome, as rainforests are such an iconic environment, and I could totally see this pack coming out next spring as the 13th DLC, but that's just my own prediction. So let's go ahead and get right on into it by taking a look at some animals from South America. Kicking it all off, we have the Black-Handed Spider Monkey. This right here is the kind of animal that I really, really want when it comes to South America. I really feel like we are missing more New World primates more than anything when it comes to this whole continent. I... Like, as much as I love the capuchin monkey, it's just not enough. We need more New World primates, and something like a black-handed spider monkey would just be the perfect option. Plus, with the recent addition of brachiation, I can't see how they won't do spider monkeys at some point. I just, I really think we're going to get them, and honestly, I would bet next spring. That's just my own opinion. 
Next up, we are already onto the exhibit animal. We have the eyelash viper. I know people want more snakes in the game. I'm one of those people. And something like an eyelash viper would be a very beautiful, unique looking snake. I love them. They're also quite small too, surprisingly, but yeah, they're very small, bright yellow viper that again, I just would love to have. Um, and I'll explain why later, why I chose this one over another very popular exhibit animal, but I stand by my choice. I really enjoy the eyelash viper and would love to have them in the game. Then we have the South American Kawadi. Again, another big animal people want right now. Kawadis are definitely an icon for the rainforest and had to be on this list. And then lastly for South America, we have the Ocelot, and just like the Arabian Sand Cat, these are the kind of smaller elusive cats that I would hope we'd get in the game uh, from this point on, so I had to mention them. And we're going to go ahead and jump all the way over to the rainforests of Oceania with the Goodfellows Tree Kangaroo. Uh, and honestly, I'll tell you right now, I'm like not at all sold on either Machis or Goodfellows Tree Kangaroo. I think I'd prefer Machis, but I chose the Goodfellows Tree Kangaroo because I think they are more of a true rainforest animal, or it was more of a safe bet. I think they're both found, both found in rainforest, but like, the Goodfellows is more of an icon for the rainforest of New Guinea. Um, but... All in all, tree kangaroos are definitely something that I've seen a lot of people want uh, added to the game, and it would definitely be a big one. Uh, they're not an easy animal to make, though. They're very unique in the way they move, so as much as I'd hope we get them, it could be a bit of a stretch. We're just going to have to wait and see, but good Village tree kangaroo definitely needed to be mentioned on this list. Going over to the temperate rainforests of Madagascar, we have the Fusa, an animal that is just gonna happen at some point, somehow, some way, some day. I just don't see how we're gonna get the Fusa. It's definitely a big up and coming animal for the game. My big question is though, are they gonna be using like a cat rig, despite not being cats, or are they just gonna go ahead and make them completely unique? I don't know, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out. Hopping on over to the rainforests of Africa, we have the Red River Hog. And as I mentioned in the last animal pack, the game is kind of needing more swine, or at least swine-like animals, so a Red River Hog is definitely another big up-and-coming animal that's been talked about for a long time, so pretty much any day now we should get them. And then lastly, we're going to jump all the way over to the rainforest of Southeast Asia, specifically Sulawesi. We have the Lowland Anoa. As I've mentioned before, I feel like Frontier is just going to want to do more both well-known and un unknown ungulates for the game. They just like to kind of surprise us like that, and they've already done it a lot this year. So I feel like the Lowland Anoa would just be a perfect, ideal Frontier choice. That's just my own opinion, but, you know, I'd love to have them in the game. And that about wraps it up for the eight main animals up above. Let's go ahead and jump down now into the alternative animals. Continuing with the rainforest of Southeast Asia, we have the Lar Gibbon. Now that Siamangs have become a thing in the game, pretty much any gibbons they can do now, and it'd be great to get more, you know, whether that be Lar Gibbons or Northern White Cheek Gibbons or whatever they want to do, just more gibbons would be great to have. So I wanted to mention one on the list. And then going all the way back over to the rainforest of Africa one more time, we've got the dwarf crocodile. You know, the game is needing more crocodiles, at least from Africa, and so I feel like something as unique and as small and honestly as cute as a dwarf crocodile would be a great choice in my opinion. Uh, and yes, I do think they are cute. I think they're a very cool animal, and I always just think of like San Diego Zoo's Africa rocks. I'd love to have them. They are definitely also a rainforest animal, so I wanted to mention them on the list. And then also we have one more ungulate, we have the yellow-backed diker, or dukier, however you want to call it. Uh, again, another good uh, ungulate alternative in my opinion. I'd love to have them. I know they're not like the most exciting animal to some people, but you need those kind of ungulates to fill in the gaps at the end of the day, so more the merrier in my opinion, which is why I've gone ahead and mentioned them on the list. And then jumping all the way back over to Madagascar, we're just jumping everywhere, we have the Panther Chameleon, the big one that, honestly, I think most people would have expected to be the main exhibit animal up above. But the truth is, as much as I would love chameleons, like, really love them, they are not an easy exhibit uh, animal to do. The truth is, like, they are... I mean, besides the fact that they change color, the way they move is very unique, and you also gotta consider the fact that, like, one of the most iconic things is shooting their tongue out to eat. You know, and... It's just as cool as it would be, that's a lot that that's a lot of stuff that they've really never done with the majority of animals, or pretty much all the animals in the exhibits, uh, which really just is, is just another way of saying we need an exhibit uh, update, or just, you know, a general update to the exhibit animals. Um, so I feel like, you know, if we're ever going to get a chameleon, it would come with an update to the exhibit animals, just because it's such a unique, honestly, more advanced feeling exhibit animal, but that's just my own opinion, which is why I've chosen to put them in the alternatives, but I still had to mention them because, you know, it's an iconic uh, animal that I know people want right now. 
Jumping back over to the rainforest of South America for the last time, we have the brown-throated sloth. You know, just like the chameleon, it's a big one that people want right now, but as much as we want them, you know, and even though we've gotten brachiation recently, the truth is, they're still a stretch. They really are. Uh, so one of the trickiest animals to get, but an animal that clearly people want nonetheless, and could still very well happen, but the truth is, they're still super unique for the game and may not work out very well, which is why they're just in the alternatives, but I had to mention them. You can't have a rainforest animal pack without the mention of sloths. And then after that, we're going to continue with the southern Tamandua. Just, you know, one potential unique animal alternative if they're just looking for more of those for this kind of pack. A, a Tamandua would be a great choice. It's just, you know, an arboreal anteater, so I figured it'd be a cool mention. And then, second to last, we have the Black Howler Monkey. The truth is, the game is just missing so many New World Primates, and I can make a whole list filled with all the New World Primates that I want. But at the end of the day, I just chose the two biggest ones, Spider Monkeys and Howler Monkeys. I really hope we get some more soon. Either one of these would be great, or multiple. Uh, we just need more in general, so I wanted to mention the Black Howler Monkey. And lastly, we have the Brazilian Porcupine, like the Tamandua. Just, you know, one good, unique... Uh, animal alternative if they want to do another one plus the game is just missing porcupines in general so i'd love to have them and also just in case you didn't know they're also known as the prehensile tail porcupine i got that mixed up before like i thought prehensile tail porcupines were their own thing but as it turns out there's different subspecies and brazilian porcupines are the big ones that people are usually used to seeing and those are the big ones in zoos so brazilian porcupines would be a great choice in my opinion and that about wraps it up for the Rainforest Animal Pack. Again, a pack I feel would be an awesome idea for a DLC, and one I would hope to come out next spring. Uh, but let me know what you guys think of it and what animals you would pick. But now let's go ahead and move on to the next pack. We've looked at deserts and rainforests, and now we're on to grasslands. I actually would have expected the next pack to be a grasslands animal pack if the conservation pack didn't already have a bit of a grasslands theme to it. So I kind of doubt the next pack is going to be a grasslands animal pack, only because it would feel a bit repetitive, but I still hold out hope that we could see a pack like this next fall, maybe fall of 2023, because as you're about to see, there's a lot you can do with a pack like this. And so let's just go ahead and get right on into it. Starting out with the grasslands of Africa, we have the Black Rhinoceros, an animal that I know the community would welcome with open arms. The truth is, you can never have enough rhino, and that applies to both the real world and the game, so this one I think would be a pretty awesome addition and just had to be on this pack. Then after that we have another personal favorite, the Secretary Bird. Man, do I really want these guys. And as you're about to see, this pack is great for terrestrial birds, and I could totally see the Secretary Bird being the king of it all and being the face of the pack. I really hope we get these guys, as they're just such an awesome animal. And then after that we have the Honey Badger, or Rattel as you could call them. Uh, I think Honey Badgers would be awesome, I'd love to have them. They're a unique animal, and you know, even though they're not exclusive to grasslands, it's still one of their biggest environments, so I think it would count. Then after that, we are jumping over to the grasslands of Eurasia, and we have the Saiga antelope. In my opinion, this is basically the proboscis monkey all over again. You know, they're not super big in captivity, but they'd still be awesome to have. I could totally see people falling in love with the Saiga antelope. They're just such an interesting looking animal, you know, constantly joked as like an animal from Star Wars. You know, even though they're not big in captivity, I would still welcome them with open arms, and um, hopefully we'll get them. And after that, we have the exhibit animal for the pack, the European Glass Lizard, an animal that's even weirder than the name itself. These guys are, of course, legless lizards. Uh, in fact, what excites me even more than the animal is the possibility of, like, a grasslands-themed tank. They're also called the Sheltropusic or Shel- yeah, Sheltro or Shel- Sheltropusic, something like that. Very cool animal, could be an awesome tank animal in my opinion. Jumping over to the grasslands of Australia, we have the emu, uh, another really big one that people want right now. I do expect this one, it's just, it's high up on there on the meta wish list, so I'd count. I I'm definitely counting on it happening one day. And then after that, we have the southern hairy-nosed wombat. Uh, for me, you know, wombats is just another one that's going to happen at some point. Uh, it's hard to say whether they're going to do the southern hairy-nosed or the common wombat, but I went ahead and picked the southern hairy-nosed as they're just a personal favorite for me. Uh, I love them. I think they're very cool, and I'm just, honestly, any day now, we should get them, and I can't wait to see them. And lastly, jumping over to the grasslands of South America, we have what is definitely the most heavily requested canine right now, the Maine Wolf. 
just a really big one that I know people want and would just be an absolute must for a pack like this. And I totally get why the community wants them. I mean, they're just such an interesting, cool looking canine that I totally see why we should have them. And I do expect them at some point. And that about wraps it up for the eight main animals up above. Let's go ahead and jump down now to the alternative animals. Going back to the grasslands of Africa, we have the Cory Bustard. Not a very well-known terrestrial bird, but still one that I think would be awesome to have. They are found in zoos regularly, I've seen them before. Very cool bird, kind of like the secretary bird, or like the red-legged Sariyama, but instead, uh, you know, just more like in the middle. It's really just the red-legged Sariyama of Africa. Again, I think they'd be awesome, and I just wanted to mention a lesser-known terrestrial bird that could potentially be picked by Frontier. After that, we have the Caracal, what I think would be a good alternative to the Honey Badger. Uh, honestly, any more smaller, lesser cats, as I've said before, is what the game needs, so the Caracal's another good option. Then we have the Crested Porcupine, another big one that people want right now, uh, and again, another one I kind of expect to happen at some point. Uh, they're found in a number of different environments, but Grasslands is one of their big ones, so had to include them here. Uh, and I do think they would be a pretty cool addition, let's be honest. Going back over to the South American Grasslands one more time, we have the Greater Rhea. Basically the ostriches of South America would be a cool bird, and although I wouldn't expect them, I wanted to mention them and give them some credit. And then going back over to Eurasia for the final time, we have the Persian Onager, or Onager, whatever you want to call it. See, I, you know, I would have included Shavalsky's horse on this list if we didn't already have them, but to me the Persian Onager is like the perfect alternative to the Shavalsky's horse, and they were originally going to be in the top eight main animals, uh, but I went, ahead, I went ahead and just put them in the alternatives, because at the end of the day, the game doesn't need any more equids, but if we were to get any more, again, something like an Onager would just be a solid choice in my opinion. And then we have the Sloth Bear, an interesting choice. You wouldn't think of a bear being in a Grasslands animal pack, but the Sloth Bears do live in Grasslands quite a lot. It's like one of their big environments, as well as the temperate forests of India, but Sloth Bears are really cool, surprisingly aggressive, and I think would be, you know, a nice bear addition. The game isn't dying for more bears, but if we're going to get any more, Sloth Bears would be one of the big ones. And then onto the second to last animal and the exhibit alternative for the pack, we have the King Cobra, a snake that does spend a lot of its time in the grasslands, and another really big snake that people just want in general. I would definitely say this one has a good chance of being included and honestly would probably be picked over the European glass lizard, but I just love the I love the legless lizard so much I just had to have it up top, but I definitely needed to mention the uh, King Cobra. And lastly, we have the Black Buck. Uh, just, you know, there's so many ungulates that you can do with a Grasslands Animal Pack. I mean, I could have made a whole list of just tons more ungulates they could have chosen as Grasslands are like the pinnacle environment for most antelopes and most ungulates. Uh, but Black Bucks are a certain one I know people would enjoy. And uh, it's just a bit different as I, I actually used to think they lived in Africa, but they don't. They live in Asia. And I think they'd be an awesome addition. Very beautiful looking ungulate. So I just wanted to mention them on the video. And that is it for the Grasslands Animal Pack. A pack idea that could be presumed more boring to some is one that I see a lot of potential in, and that I hope a lot of you see too with this video. There are still so many animals I could have done, especially birds. No joke, there are still so many bird species I wanted to mention that I honestly considered adding a third alternative list just for the birds. I mean, I'm talking multiple crane species, multiple stork species, guinea fowl, and even birds like the red-legged Sariyama. The point is, I hope people understand that there's a lot you can do with a Grasslands Animal Pack, and that you cannot have one without some birds. And now with all that being said, let's go ahead and move on to our last Animal Pack. So we've looked at deserts, rainforests, and even grasslands, so what's the next best environment? Temperate forests. Temperate forests, like rainforests, are a major environment found worldwide with enough variation in both animals and environment that I think it's worth having its own pack. So let's not waste any more time and just get right on into it, starting out with animals from the temperate forests of Eurasia. First up is the Japanese raccoon dog, or the tanuki as you could call them. Really cool, honestly cute looking animal that not a lot of people know about, but that I think would be an awesome addition. They really wouldn't expect it in any pack, but again I think it would be a surprisingly solid choice that people would enjoy. After that, we've got the Siberian musk deer, really cool animal in my opinion, and another one like the raccoon dog that wouldn't be expected, but that would be welcomed to the game. Of course, they're iconic for those big fangs they've got sticking out of their mouth. Really cool deer, very primitive looking, uh, I think would be an interesting ungulate addition in my opinion. 
After that, we've got the European bison. Definitely an animal missing from the Europe pack. I know some people really wanted them. Uh, so I've gone ahead and decided to put them in this pack, give them a bit of a mention. Uh, and just like the pack itself, they're a bit of a reflection in which it's not really needed like the pack, but is nice to have. This is just a nice pack to have with a lot of nice animals to have, and the European bison being one of them. Then after that, you have an animal found pretty much all over the world, but especially Eurasia and North America, the red fox. Uh, the game is not desperate for any more foxes, or really that many more canines at all, but I know people have wanted the red fox for a long time, and so I just had to include them on this list. They're definitely a true temperate forest animal. I think they'd be perfect, so why not, you know? And then after that, we go over to the temperate forests of North America with the American black bear. As I said before with the sloth bear, the game isn't really desperate for any more bears, but it'd be nice to have uh, a couple, and the American black bear is definitely one of those. And once again, like a reflection of the pack, it's not needed, but it's just nice to have. I know some people really would really enjoy them, and there's also a lot of zoos in America that have black bears, so it would definitely be very big in, uh, in terms of building North American zoos. After that, we are on to the exhibit animal for the pack. We have the Eastern Box Turtle. As I mentioned all the way back then in the earlier part of the video, the game is really missing more turtles and tortoises, both in the tanks and outside of them. Uh, so something like an Eastern Box Turtle would be a great choice. It's a very beautiful looking turtle in my opinion. Uh, I think it'd be an awesome addition. Then we jump over to the Temperate Forests of Oceana, where we have the Tasmanian Devil. I've got so much I want to say about this animal, really, really big one right now, um, and I'm going to save all that for later on in the video because some of these animals will be reappearing later, uh, so we'll get to them later, but yeah, Tasmanian Devil could be a really cool animal for a pack like this. Then after that, for the final animal up above, we have the short beaked echidna, an animal that no one is really desperate for, but I think would really enjoy if they were included. Uh, echidnas are super cool. One more monotreme just to kind of round it out. Uh, I'd love to have them. I think a lot of people would, so I just had to mention them on this video. And that is it for the eight animals up above. Let's go ahead and jump down now into the alternative animals. Continuing with the temperate forests of Oceana, we have the North Island Brown Kiwi. And just like the Tasmanian Devil, I'm going to save a lot of my stuff about this animal for later on in the video as we will see them reappear. But then after the kiwi, we also have the red-necked wallaby, an animal that actually was going to be up above in the eight main animals originally, uh, but I chose to put in the alternatives because I just can't really decide exactly whether or not they'd be a good choice. Also, it's because of fitting with how big their names are. At the end of the day, I just wanted to mention at least one to acknowledge that wallabies would be a great addition to the game, any species of wallaby, uh, but I just can't quite nail exactly which one and in which pack, so... Right here, we just got the red-necked wallaby because why not? It's also like the biggest one and the most requested. And then we're going to go ahead and get back over to the uh, temperate forest of North America where we have the raccoon. Not personally an animal that I am looking forward to or ever expect. Uh, it's kind of funny because I know people really, really want them. They're just, they've become such an iconic animal and I can't, like, I can't deny they're really cool, but they're also assholes. I do not like raccoons and I really do not care if they ever get added to the game, but I know with the growing demand in raccoons and the growing popularity, they could happen and you know what, why not? It'd, it'd be really cool. Then after that, we have the wild turkey, kind of like the raccoon, more of a, what could be seen as more of like a joke animal inclusion and just more for the fun of it. Uh, it could still be a really cool creature too. I know uh, turkeys are definitely very big and iconic for North America and are in lots of zoos and would also just be a good choice for any like wildlife you want to build with North America. So, you know, I would welcome turkeys with open arms, but I also would not be surprised if we never got them. And for one exhibit alternative, we have the Hellbender. Super, super cool animal. I really hope that we get like a giant salamander at some point, whether that be Hellbenders or Japanese giant salamander or Chinese giant salamander. Any giant salamander would be a really cool choice in my opinion. Then we're going to go ahead and jump back into the forests of Eurasia for the final time, where we have the red deer. Uh, another big animal that could have been in the Europe pack, but just didn't get included. Uh, could be seen here. I think it would be a nice addition. They're very iconic deer for Europe. So, you know, why not? I know people would enjoy them. And then we also have the wild boar, another animal that, like raccoons, I know people want, but I just could not care less about. You know, here in North America, wild boars are invasive animals, and <laughs> instead of putting them in zoos, I'm used to putting them on my plate. I just, 
I don't like wild boars, they're a pain in the ass here in North America, so I could care less, but again, I know some people want them. And you know, and for the sake of building European wildlife in the game, a wild boar would be a great choice. And lastly, we have the golden snub-nosed monkey, found in the carnivorous forests of China. I think these guys would be a really cool primate. I've mentioned them before in my last speculation video all the way back in March, uh, and I still hold out hope that we could get them one day. They're just, they've also become a little bit of a meme recently, so I feel like the popularity combined with the fact that they just are a cool animal, a very pretty looking primate, I think there's a good chance we could see them one day, so I'd say just keep that in mind. So we've explored a few different kinds of environmental themed animal packs, and clearly there's a lot that can be done, but what about the scenery packs? Well, it's definitely trickier to figure out what exactly they plan to do with these packs, but I think it's safe to say that Frontier is going to be more open to exploring new themes when it comes to these kind of packs, and the conservation pack is already evidence for that. So in these next four packs, we're going to be exploring both environmental themed scenery packs, as I don't think those are impossible, and more miscellaneous themed scenery packs. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Kicking off the scenery packs, a selection of DLCs that ultimately seem more like a mixed bag right now, we first have a mountain pack. This is an idea that I've seen thrown around in the community before, and so I wanted to go ahead and put my own take on it in this video. Kicking off the mountain pack, we have the spectacled bear, or Andean bear as you could call it. As I've said before multiple times in the video, and as I'll say one more time, the game doesn't really need any more bears, but if we're going to get any, something like a spectacled bear would be an awesome choice. I feel like, you know, of all the ones we've looked at today, American black bear, sloth bear, this one is definitely the biggest, most requested one. I mean, they're kind of special in a way, as, they're like, as they are the last of the short-faced bears, uh, and are kind of primitive in that regard, so I think they'd be a great inclusion, and I just, I really wanted to mention them in this pack, and honestly, they could be the face of the DLC, in my opinion. Then after that, we have one of many mountainous ungulates uh, in this uh, pack idea. We have the Rocky Mountain Goat, or just Mountain Goat. Uh, I love these guys. I think they're kind of a, a funny creature. I mean, they're cool. I've seen them in person before. Um, they are just big, fluffy, mountainous goats, though very aggressive and, I guess, have a tendency to hit people. I'd love to have them. I think they'd be a fun animal inclusion. Then after that we have the Wolverine, an animal that I know people have wanted for quite a while, but yet every time we get the opportunity to have one, the game leaves them out. Uh, you know, we could have gotten them in the Arctic pack, we could have gotten them in the Europe pack, uh, but we didn't, and now I feel like if we're going to get another opportunity someday, like a mountain pack, well then I feel like we need to get them. Wolverines, I think they're just so cool and they're, they're worthy of a spot in Planet Zoo. Then after that we have another mountain ungulate, the Sichuan Takin. Very cool animal in my opinion. They're, I feel like they're iconic enough to the Himalayas that they'd be uh, a good inclusion and kind of a worthwhile one. Though they are at competition with another uh, animal from the Himalayas that I'll mention later on in this part of the video. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I chose the Sichuan Takin because I feel like uh, they're just big enough and they're they're big enough literally and big enough in zoos that they're uh, a more interesting ungulate to include. They're, they're huge. And like in person, I've seen them before at the uh, Henry Dorley Zoo. They are very big, bigger than I realized. Um, so I'd love to have them just for that fact, just the fact that they surprised me. And lastly, we are on to the exhibit animal for the pack. I'm not gonna lie, when it comes to a theme like this, being mountains, it's honestly a bit to find some proper exhibit animals. I mean, the truth is most of the time you're not gonna find a lucrative set of reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates living all the way up in higher elevations. So there just wasn't a whole lot of obvious options and I had to do some real digging to find some good choices. But I'm happy with what I picked uh, and that is the Mong Mountain Pit Viper or the Mong Shun Pit Viper, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, clearly snakes are still something I think the game needs more of as this is the third snake in the video. But this one is an absolute beauty I love the Mong Mountain Pit Viper, very cool. Also a recently discovered species, uh, and one that I think would be an awesome, but ultimately unconventional uh, choice for the pack, but I feel like people would be happy to have it, uh, and I just, I feel like it fits. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and get into the alternatives with one other exhibit animal I could find, the Greater Shorthorned Lizard. These guys are found pretty much all throughout, uh, sort of the central western uh, part of uh, North America. They do live up on higher elevations, maybe not quite mountainous environments, but just definitely higher elevations, more like higher desert uh, cliffs and stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of what I picture, um, but it's just one potential alternative. And you know, Frontier does have a little bit of a history of choosing uh, unexpected exhibit animals, and this could totally be another one in my opinion. 
Then after that we have the Markor. As I mentioned, there is an animal that was kind of competing with the Sichuan Takin for a spot. That would be the Markor. They're both very iconic animals of uh, the mountains in Asia. Uh, I just think of the Himalayas. But uh, the Markor, it's an absolutely beautiful animal. I know a lot of people want them. And I'm kind of like torn between the two, between Takins and Markor. But for the sake of this video, I just put the Takin up above and the Markor down below. I don't think we'd get both of them in the same pack. That's just my own opinion. I think they're too, uh, they, they both overlap too much. Um, despite being very different, they just, they're both very iconic in one environment. So between the two, I chose the Takin, but hopefully one day we can get both of them in the game. After that, we have the palace cat, and you know, as I keep saying when it comes to the cats, uh, we just need more smaller, more elusive, uh, very not well-known cats, uh, such as the palace cat. I mean, these guys live up in higher grasslands, pretty much all throughout central to northern uh, Asia, and uh, I mean, they live, up, they live up in higher elevations, so I think they count for it. Uh, but they're just, you know, they're a very unconventional choice, but they've also gotten very popular in recent years, and I feel like there's actually a decent chance we could see the palace cat, so I wanted to include them. And then second to last, we have the camoys. I, th I think that's how you pronounce it. Another animal that could have been in the Europe pack that I know people wanted, but we ultimately did not get, uh, but still worth mentioning, and, you know, the final uh, ungulate for the mountains. Uh, just one more option. I feel like the other three, Rocky Mountain Goats, Takins, and Markors, outweigh the Camoys, but you never know. Frontier like to surprise us, so a Camoys could absolutely happen. And lastly, we have the Gelata. Very different compared to the rest of them, uh, but still an animal that I think would be a, a very worthy inclusion. These guys are known for living up on the cliffs and uh, mountains of Ethiopia, basically. And there's a few zoos I know that have them, and I, I honestly think they'd be a very special inclusion. So at least I wanted to mention them in the alternatives. For me, I could totally picture a mountain-themed pack serving as either an animal pack or a scenery pack. Like the previous DLCs we've looked at in this video, mountains are just a major environment found worldwide, with all sorts of variation in both the environment and the animals, offering lots of potential for new content in the game. Though I wouldn't be surprised if a mountain-themed pack never happens, I would still welcome a theme like this with open arms. Next up is a big one, a pack idea that's been heavily talked about for a long time now, and a pack that is hard to do without bats. Of course, I'm talking about a nocturnal pack. I feel like there's just so much that can be done with a theme like this, but it's just hard to describe without actually seeing it, which is why we're just looking at the animals today, so let's go ahead and get into those. Kicking off the nocturnal pack with what would be the face of the pack in my opinion, the Tasmanian Devil. And oh boy, I have got a lot I want to say about this one, but I'll try and keep it limited. Basically, the point is, the Tasmanian Devil right now is basically, it has the Capybara Syndrome, as I want to call it, where just like back before the Wetlands Animal Pack, everyone, everyone knew we were about to get Capybaras. And of course, lo and behold, we got them. And so it's basically the same situation right now with the Tasmanian Devil. They are the number one animal on the meta wish list, and we've just been dying for them. Like, any day now, we're going to get them. And I feel very confident in saying we're going to get them by the end of this year. I don't want to say the very next pack, because I could totally see this pack being the 12th pack of the year, in which we can get Tasmanian Devils then, so possibly December. Um, but if not December, then hopefully the very next pack. And I'll tell you right now, I am getting ready. These guys are one of my all-time favorite animals. If not my favorite, they're like up there with rhinos as my favorites. Um, and I, I'm, I'm being so serious about it that I'm like, honestly considering getting a Tasmanian Devil tattoo on my shoulder uh, in the coming weeks, pretty much right before the next pack, or at least whenever I know we're going to get them for the next pack, I'm going to get that tattoo uh, because that's how much I am excited for them. I love these guys. Cannot wait to see them. Then after that we have the Pygmy Slow Loris. I mean, right now this animal is basically a representation for most of the animals in this pack. That being very unique, uh, lesser known, special, honestly kind of expensive to make animals. I mean, that's pretty much what this pack has to offer, and the Slow Loris is just a perfect example of that. I mean, the way they move and function is really nothing that can't be done. It's kind of like just like a koala. Spend most of their time up in the trees, but they will still go on the ground if they have to. Uh, I think it'd be a cool inclusion as they're like one of the only venomous mammals. Uh, yeah, just a really cool animal, and I think these guys in particular, the pygmy Slow Loris, are the biggest ones in captivity, so that's why I chose them. 
Then after that, we have the Fusa, another returning animal. Uh, nothing I really haven't said before about them. Uh, very cool animal. Can't wait to see if they're going to actually happen or not. Uh, and I think they would be a good choice for this pack if they were never to be in a rainforest animal pack. Or we just never get a rainforest animal pack. So if not then, then here with the nocturnal pack. Then after that, we have another returning animal, the North Island Brown Kiwi. Like the Tasmanian Devil, another one I'm feeling very confident in that we're going to get at some point, and one I really, really want. I love kiwis, very cool animals. They will absolutely work with the game's mechanics, because of course they can't fly. I um, mean, their closest relative are emus, um, and they would be a great representation of New Zealand. So really counting on them, and I think they'd just be perfect for this kind of pack. And then lastly, as the exhibit animal of the pack, I, again, I feel very confident in saying that you can't have a pack like this without geckos. Geckos are just such a classic nocturnal animal, in my opinion. I just feel like the game would need them at some point, and this would be the way to go. Um, as far as what kind of gecko, well, I've chosen Toke geckos, uh, and honestly, I don't really care what kind. I just feel so confident that they're going to do a gecko in a pack like this that I don't even have a single exhibit alternative down below. All the animals down below are just habitat animals. Um, um, but yeah, Toke geckos, maybe New Caledonia geckos, uh, I mean there's different options, but geckos in general is where I feel like a pack like this would go with the exhibit animals. Then after that we're down to the alternatives, and uh, we're going to kick it off with the II. I will say right now, I originally had another exhibit animal here. It was originally going to be the Lord Howe Island Stick Insect, which are nocturnal technically. But at the end of the day, I really, really wanted to mention the II, so I chose to put the II here instead uh, and kicked out the Lord Howe Island Stick Insect. Um, but the II, again, like a lot of the animals in this pack, pack ID I should say, IIs are very unique animals and would be very, would be a very, very special inclusion for the game. I know some people want them and have hopes for them, so they were worth mentioning. Then after that we have more of a cheaper option, the Striped Hyena. As I said before, a lot of these animals are going to be quite pricey to make for Frontier and they're going to look for cheaper options, so something like a Striped Hyena would be a great choice, uh, still nocturnal and would still be very desirable in my opinion. Then after that, we have a very interesting inclusion. We have the Linianus, or I mean, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Two-Toed Sloth, basically. You know, I mentioned the Three-Toed Sloths before in the Rainforest Animal Pack, and it's no different here. I mean, any sloth would work for both a Rainforest Pack or a Nocturnal Pack, but I wanted to mention both kinds in different parts of the video, so I put the Two-Toed Sloths here, uh, which are, of course, still Nocturnal, and would be a very special inclusion. I mean... Again, it just comes down to the question of whether or not they can even do sloths, but if they ever decide to, a nocturnal pack could be another cool uh, way in which to give us sloths. Second to last, we have the tiger quoll. Uh, not a very well-known animal, but one that I would love to have personally. They're kind of like the Tasmanian devil, but a little bit smaller and far less known, uh, but still a really cool creature and are kind of iconic for uh, nocturnal houses in my opinion. I mean, most nocturnal houses I've seen have had tiger quolls at some point or still have them. Uh, I know they're like, I think they've gotten phased out of captivity for the most part, but still would be a very interesting inclusion and one that at least I know I would welcome with open arms. And then lastly, kind of like the same situation as the sloths, mentioning both kind of sloths, we have the common wombat. You know, I mentioned the uh, southern hairy nose wombat before. I want to go ahead and give credit to the common wombat. Probably the more likely option at the end of the day, but still nocturnal and, you know, Technically, the southern hairy nose could still be here too, but uh, common wombats, I'm just waiting for wombats at any point now, like a lot of these animals, so uh, I wanted to mention them on the nocturnal pack. I have so much hope for a pack like this, and I know there's been some talk going around about this being the next animal pack, and while I do think that would be awesome, I also think it has a much better chance as a scenery pack, that's just my own opinion. I feel like these are the kind of scenery packs we're going to be getting from now on, and if so, I have no problems with it. Looking at one more environmental themed pack, we have the Coastal Pack. What was originally going to be an Islands Pack when I began making this video, I ultimately decided just to make it Coastal themed, uh, and that's what we're about to get into. And kicking off the Coastal Pack, we have the Sea Otter. Pretty much one of the biggest reasons why I even chose to do a Coastal Pack in the first place. Sea Otters are very iconic when it comes to the coasts. Uh, and I feel like, you know, even though we already have two otters, being Asian Small Clot Otter and the Giant Otter, two very well-known river otters, if we're going to get any more, of course it needs to be the Sea Otter. I would love to see them in the game. I think they'd be a very special inclusion, and I know people would love them. 
Then after that we have a very similar situation, the little blue penguin. The game already has two penguins, and although we're not really dying for any more, it would be great to get at least one more and let alone have it be a little blue penguin. Though I can think of one other really big penguin species, but we're going to save it for later on. Uh, still though, little blue penguins, I mean, come on, little blue and a penguin, I mean you don't get much more desirable than that. It's an animal that just had to be on this list. And the next up we have the Pacific Walrus, again a very similar situation to the otters and penguins. We already have two penny pits in the game and we are not desperate for any more, but hey, if we're going to get any more, might as well have it be something as big and as iconic as the walrus. I know they're being phased out of zoos, but I also know people would still love to have them in the game, so I just had to include them on the list. And then after those three, we are finally onto something that is not uh, a regular situation, but something that is completely brand new and fresh and also kind of controversial, the green sea turtle. Now I say controversial because you, honestly you would expect an animal like this to be in a proper marine expansion and that is not what this is. The idea behind the coastal pack here is that it's more of like an aquatic pack too and really it's not going to do any anything new for the game other than just give you more uh, specifically coastal themed animals uh, but we have to have something new in there besides more penguins, otters, and uh, penny peds so we've got the green sea turtle and honestly I really don't see how they wouldn't work. If you can just accept the fact that a green sea turtle doesn't have to come in a proper marine expansion, then I think they'd be a very awesome addition. I mean, sea turtles can go on land, so they could work in the game. Uh, and I just, you know, of course I had to pick the green sea turtle as it's the most famous species. And yeah, I feel pretty confident in this choice, but it's definitely more of a fun, uh, optimistic choice for sure. And then lastly, like the green sea turtle, as the exhibit animal, I've chose a very optimistic choice, but the fiddler crab, you know, if we're going to explore the coasts, might as well do something more ambitious like a crab. That game doesn't have crabs, but why not, right? Why not beach themed tanks? I think that'd be pretty cool, and a fiddler crab would be a great choice. And then after that we are into the alternatives, kicking it off with the Gen 2 Penguin, simply just another really big penguin species that we could get instead of the Little Blue. Honestly, either one I would love, uh, but I guess Gen 2 Penguins would be really cool for the purposes of building more complete Antarctic themed exhibits, you know, just to throw in another penguin with the King Penguin, uh, which is why I personally would love the Gen 2 as well. And then after that we have the loggerhead sea turtle, again just like a very specific alternative to the green sea turtle, still would work the same way, still introduce uh, the same kind of niche to the game, but hey, loggerheads, they're even bigger, and arguably just as iconic, so I wanted to mention them. And then after that we have one that I'm honestly mixed about as far as whether or not it would be an exhibit animal or a habitat animal, we have the coconut crab. Honestly, I have no idea. It'd be pretty freaking awesome if it was a habitat animal, but honestly, I'd say it's more likely to be an exhibit animal. Even though they're huge, uh, I've still seen them in tanks before, so I, I think it would work. Uh, but yeah, coconut crab, very interesting choice. I really wanted to mention them and get your guys' take too. Like, let me know, would you make the coconut crab an exhibit animal or a habitat animal? Second to last, we have the brown fur seal. One more penny pit alternative, because why not? Uh, the game already has a seal, and it has a sea line, so why not a fur seal? Fur seals are actually kind of their own thing. They're kind of in the middle, closer to sea lines, but um, not quite sea lines, nor not quite seals. They're just kind of their own thing, and these guys are one of the most infamous species of fur seals, found pretty much all over, I think, Africa, Australia, uh, in South America, so pretty, a pretty big one and uh, worth mentioning on the list. And lastly, just to shake it up because why not, uh, the Great Blue Heron. I just wanted to mention one more animal that isn't an otter, penguin, penny pet, or turtle. The Great Blue Heron could be a pretty cool coastal bird. They do fly a lot, but they're also on the ground a lot. I think it's just enough for it to count as a terrestrial bird, just a regular habitat bird. Uh, in the game, and I love them. I mean, they're my neighbors. I'm just giving them a knock and uh, would say that they'd be a good choice for a coastal pack. This is one pack idea on the video that I will admit is more of a fun idea than anything. The truth is, a coastal pack isn't as likely and it's just more of an expansion to the aquatic pack, but I wanted to mention it anyway and talk about some cool animals like sea turtles and how those could work in the game even without any new major mechanics, fun stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think of this one, and now let's go ahead and move on to our last pack for the video.
what better pack to end on than a petting zoo pack? Another DLC idea that's been talked about for a long time now. There's so much I can think of that you can do with something that is as simple as a petting zoo theme. You can take a theme of domesticated animals in a farm or barn setting and put a spin on it. Like you can make this pack into a half carnival pack that gives the players like zoo themed carousels and other uh, carnival themed materials. That's just one personal idea and I can elaborate on so much more, trust me. But for now we're just looking at the animals animals. And I want to let you all know that I have pulled an arctic pack with this one, and I'm safely assuming that there just wouldn't be a fifth exhibit animal in this pack, and that it would just be a four habitat animal DLC. I couldn't think of a single exhibit animal for this one, so there just isn't. Uh, and now with that being said, let's finally get into it. Alright, first up in our trip to the barn, we have the Shetland Pony. I picked this one because I've seen a lot of people choose it for their petting zoo pack ideas, and I can totally see why people pick them. I mean, they're basically just a small, cute, soft pony that are good being around people. Pretty much the ideal petting zoo animal, so I just had to put them on the list. Then after that we have the Jersey cattle. I chose these guys because I feel like these are the most typical kind of cows you think of when you think of cattle or just cow in general. And you know, even if they don't work with a petting zoo setting, at least in a farm setting, which the pack could still have, uh, these guys would be a great choice. And if not the Jersey cattle, I would also love to see potentially like Highland cattle or any sort of fluffier, softer cow could be a good choice as well. After that we have the Nigerian Dwarf Goat, and I picked these guys because they're in pretty much most petting zoos I've seen, including my own local petting zoo at the, at the zoo. Uh, and as I've seen, these guys are like very charismatic. They're a very fun uh, breed to be around, or actually most goats are. So I just, I chose these guys as, they're a, as they are a personal favorite. And lastly for the animals up above, we have the fourth habitat animal, the chicken. Yep, just straight up chickens, no particular breed, though if I had to pick one, I would do like Rhode Island Reds. I love the idea of chickens being in Planet Zoo, I think it's actually a very logical choice. I mean, chickens are usually found in zoos, in petting zoo settings, uh, and even if not in zoos, still in pretty much most agricultural themed projects you're going to make in this game, you could use chickens. Uh, so I feel like chickens would be pretty awesome. Let's, let's have chickens in Planet Zoo, despite how hilarious it might be. Getting into the alternatives, we have something similar to chickens in their own regard, domesticated rabbits. Again, no particular breed, uh, just just a general domesticated rabbit. Uh, good for petting zoos, kids love rabbits like these, the ones you can feed. Um, and I have a lot of memories as a kid where I fed lots of guinea pigs and rabbits, but I chose rabbits because they're just kind of a, a classic animal. Uh, and again, another good option. And yes would be a habitat animal i've seen people suggest having like chickens and rabbits as tank animals no i could not possibly see that so yeah just imagine letting your rabbits run around and exhibit in the game then after that we have the american pygmy goat just a good alternative to the nigerian dwarf goat i still prefer the nigerian dwarf goat but these guys are also good choices and uh, are very charismatic too from what i've seen in real life and then second to last, we have the miniature donkey, like the Shetland Pony, uh, a good option, a small, you know, cute, softer equid that people enjoy being around. I'd love to see miniature donkeys in the game uh, if we're not to get the pony. And then lastly, we have the Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. Thought it'd be a solid inclusion, but you guys can pick any kind of pig you want. I just had to mention at least one pig for a pack like this. And that is it for the petting zoo pack everyone, an idea that is as ancient as the planet zoo lion's mane, but that I really feel like we're going to see happen one day. Let me know what you think about this one and what you would do for all these scenery packs that we've looked at, what animals would you choose and what scenery would you pick. There's so much that can happen, a lot of potential when it comes to these kind of packs, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, that is my new speculation video. I'm not going to make this a long outro, as I've already been talking for way too long in this video, but I will say that I am very excited for the future of this game. Because of the choices that Frontier have made this year, they have opened up a door to loads of potential new packs, and I just can't wait to see what they do with that. So I want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone who has watched this video. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below, and what potential packs and animals you would like to see added to Planet Zoo, and then we will all find out together as a community. So thank you all once again, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.